All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the South Texas High School Baseball Podcast. Today we've got on a, uh, a lo- another local alum, someone I've been trying to have on for a little while, and we finally made it work. Uh, just moved back to Corpus right now for the time being, but we have Moody grad Michael Cantu on. So, Michael, it's a pleasure to, to have you here, and I'm uh, really excited for our talk. I got my Moody shirt on today. So uh, Trojans, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, dude, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks. I mean, thank you for having me. I, I, I know we've been going back and forth trying to get on here, but I'm glad, you know, just to sit down, talk, you know, baseball, South Texas baseball, Corpus yep. Christi. Um, there's a lot of good baseball down here, so yeah, love it. Yeah, definitely. Well, to start off, um, kind of tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, I know you're a local guy through and through, so you know, just kind of give us a story of uh, being raised here, playing here. I know you started at Carroll and then finished at Moody. Yeah. So just kind of walk us through that background. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I, I went to Carroll my freshman and sophomore year, where I think I played on you know two of some of the best baseball teams that, you know, I, I got the privilege to play on. You know, I think my sophomore year, we had Courtney Hawkins, who was a first rounder. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were the number one team in the nation at the point, at that point. Uh, it's that my baseball career at, at Carroll was, we went to the state tournament twice, which was for me, like coming in as a freshman and a sophomore being a young kid. That in eighth grade they had just won the state championship, so I was coming in like wanting to make a team and, and wanting to play for you know the best in Corpus and shoot we we went to the state tournament twice when I was there never won it we got closer every year um, but my career at Carroll was fun I played football and baseball uh, my dad was a assistant baseball coach there the reason I transferred to Moody was my dad is still there the head football coach uh, at at Moody. So I wanted to go play for my dad, you know, just part of it. And, and, and it was a, it was a weird transition. Cause it was like, I was going from one powerhouse, which was like Carol, like my fre- freshman year, my first game at Carroll was against Moody high school in a sold out Waterburger field. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was like, at, at that point when I was at Carroll, we were, we were the number one team in the nation. And I was like, man, this is, it doesn't get better than that. You know what I mean? Just for two high school teams. Yeah. And I'm sure you, there's plenty of guys that, that can talk about how Moody draws in the sense of like, they just show up. And even just like South Texas, like they show up for good baseball. They love it. Um, but yeah, I, 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 my first two years, I played for Coach Coach Yeager at, at Carroll High School. Had a great time. Uh, my last two years, I played. I graduated from Moody High School where – we went to the state tournament my junior year, which was pretty cool. We lost in the state championship to Tom Ball. I always say I was 22 and a one. It's the only game I ever lost pitching. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think, and I've been very blessed. I was very fortunate to have a great, you know, high school baseball career in the yeah. sense that like, I got to go to the state tournament three times. My senior year, we got upset. We ran into a good Victoria East team. Yeah, I remember um, that. In the second round, we we had a two out of three series. We got rained out, played a one gamer on a Saturday, yep. and I mean, you, you, the rest happened from there. You know, we yeah. we lost, and it was a good game. I think you know, I I can't even tell you the final score. I know it was a close game, but where, um, where was uh, Aaron Hernandez on his team at the time? Yeah, Aaron I think yeah, I remember him telling me that yeah. story when he, when we had him on. I think it was one to zero. Yeah, it might have been. I remember it was a, it was a close one. It might have been, yeah. Aaron Hernandez. I mean, another South Texas guy still yeah. doing it, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, baseball down here in Corpus, like they when I would go places, and you know, I, I went to when I went to Texas, like they were like, "Oh, you're from Corpus. Like, you guys got great fans down there." Mm-hmm. And, and I'll always remember my junior year when I was at Moody. Uh, we got we were supposed to play Buda Hayes in San Antonio. And it was a two out of three series and we got rained out. So it was raining in San Antonio. It was raining in Corpus. Uh, it was Saturday and you can't play on Sundays in UIL. So yeah. it was, I, I want to say it was maybe the fourth, third or fourth round. It was later on. Um, and so we show up at sa- Saturday morning to, to, to Moody, you know, cause we don't know where we're going to play this game. Yeah. Like we just show up and we're like, we know we're playing a game today. We don't know where, uh, we don't know what time. We know it's a one-game series, and it's like in high, Texas high school playoffs. Like, it's I'm getting chills thinking about it, which is it's cool. But um, I always remember 
coach came out of, coach Cudiel came out of the locker room he's like okay guys we'll go into Laredo yeah and so we're like all right you know what I mean we, we get on the bus and, and we go to Laredo and the caravan we had with us like we sold out our side of Unitrade Stadium yeah. and it was like this is within like two three hours notice yep you know what I mean like it, yeah. it, it was that's when for me I was like oh it's it's different down here mm -hmm. like I, I take pride in in playing for you know Moody High School and, and being from South Texas and, and, and being a Corpus kid. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of pro ball players out there that, that carry that same chip on their shoulder, you know, being from Corpus, yeah. even in the surrounded, surrounding areas. We've got a lot of great baseball players down here. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, you know, Laredo seems to be the common uh, neutral site whenever we can't find anywhere because <laughs> you go back to 2021 when Cal Allen and Sinton were number one and number two. And they were going to play a one gamer on Thursday night at Waterburger Field. Pouring rain Oof. gets delayed. <laughs> Friday comes, still don't know where they're playing or when. And then I think midday Friday comes out. The game's going to be 1 p.m. in Laredo on Saturday, yeah. and it's only like a 3,000 seat stadium. And they they had basically sold out Waterburger Field, yeah. which is you know double that, maybe triple that. And um, I mean a sold out crowd in Laredo, like. You know, same thing. It's baseball, baby. Yeah, You're exactly. Baseball down here. Exactly. Um, and it was on top of that, it was like 105 degrees. It was, matter. and they're it playing. They're playing on that. turf. You know, so yeah, no, it's real down here. But uh, did you? I mean, was from the time that you were a little kid, was baseball kind of the immediate go-to? Yeah, absolutely. You know, my dad played. It's funny. He's the head football coach, but he played professional baseball. He um, he was an All-American at Tarleton State. Mm. Uh, got drafted by the Cardinals, I played you know, with the Cardinals and with the Phillies for a little bit. So professional baseball is, has always been in my bloodline and yeah. in my background. Um, and sort of just from a young age, like it was always something I wanted to do. I played both, you know, sports and in, in, in high school and I loved football, I, I loved baseball, but it was always something about, you know, just wanting to, to be a baseball player no matter what. You know, I, I, there's a picture of me a younger me where I'm sleeping in my catcher's gear. Like when my dad was a head coach at the beginning of his career at Miller, he was the head baseball coach at Miller High School. Uh, he would bring home all the equipment before he would bring it, take it to the field yeah. for, for, the, for his boys. And he'd let me play with it before, you know, they got to it. But it's always been something, you know, I, I find passion in. And till this day, it's, it's something that I've, I'm 28 years old my entire I've never had a normal job I've, I've played professional baseball my entire life it's yeah. always something that you know it's a big part of my life and, and I take pride in that yeah and that's awesome to just say to, to be able to say that yeah. is incredible yeah. um were you always wanting to be a catcher did you kind of bounce around were you like yeah. a utility guy and then you settled on catcher or? yeah so I played a little bit of shortstop my freshman year okay um and I was always like the type the type of baseball player I was is like put me anywhere like I just want to get in the lineup sure yeah my first career game at Waterburger Field was in right field yeah I was a freshman in right field I never played right field and they're like listen you go play right field and so I was out there taking fly balls um I played that year I played our shortstop got hurt I played a little bit of shortstop um I played a little bit of first in, in college but like it was always about like just being in the lineup like I I knew I knew eventually I wanted to catch. Like if I wanted to hone in on a position, I wanted to catch. I just loved the the idea of being in on every pitch and yeah. helping my pitchers get outs. And as I got older, it, I, I took more meaning to that and took more pride in being a catcher. Uh, but I just think, you know, any baseball player and any way you come from, it's like, hey, you, you tell me where to play, I'll go play. Yeah. And so that was always my mindset, just even, even till this day in Pro Bowl, like I was like, Skip, we'd call our manager Skip. I'm like, I don't, I don't care, you can put me at first, DH, I know they, they'll they get mad at you if you put me in the outfield, but like, I'll play anything, I don't <laughs> care. Like, I'm just trying to get in the lineup. Yeah. I, I'm grateful to be here, I'm grateful to have a jersey. So it's like, man, if you're a ball player anywhere, and it doesn't matter where you're from and, and at what age, it's like, you need to be able to play everywhere. Yeah. You know, because yeah. there's value in that. Yeah. So, funny, you know, funny story on that. I'm left handed and I also grew up playing baseball, did the whole travel ball thing. I went to a small high school. I went to Skidmore, mm -hmm. 
right up, you know, in between Mathis and Beeville. Mm, right there. And uh, at the time, Skidmore was a very academic school, yeah. really bad at everything. Uh -huh. And so I would play travel ball with like a, you know, 14, 15, 16 year team. And then we'd play in season at Skidmore. We'd go, you know, four and 20 on the year. Like if we got lucky, we'd win four games, right? But not, I'm not exaggerating. Like my teammates couldn't field a ground ball. Like it was, it was bad. So I'm left-handed playing catcher freshman year. I'm tiny senior year. I'm left-handed playing shortstop <laughs> having to turn yeah. entirely to turn a double play. Wherever, hey, whatever you need. But again, exactly. It was like, I was happy to be in the lineup, yeah. and, you know, wherever you need me. I just so happened to be the most qualified or able to catch a ground ball. That's how it is sometimes. Exactly. It's so game. yeah, definitely. Uh, even when, so were there moments or times in high school or even when you were in junior high playing travel ball or any kind of ball at any level where you weren't a starter and you were just trying to be the best teammate you could be? Um, not really. And until I got really to college and, and to pro ball, I was always like sort of, I, w I always played. Okay. I started, I was very fortunate and, and I was very blessed to, you know, had the ability to be able to start as a freshman uh, throughout my high school career, even before then, always, you know, being in, playing in good teams, good travel ball teams. It's something, you know, I worked hard at and, and it was no accident yeah. because of the work, you know, that I put in. Uh, but I was always sort of that, that guy, they say, like mm -hmm. on, the, on the team and growing up. And, and I really didn't, f face that challenge of just trying to show up and be a good teammate and being a good baseball player because there's a lot in this game that you can't control mm -hmm. you know and, and you can't control who writes the lineup you can't control you know a lot of things in this game and it's how you show up despite that you yeah. know like knowing the things that you can't control knowing that, that you may not be in there today but still going and and, and working as if you are so yeah. uh, it wasn't really uh, young at a young age i i really didn't it was hard for me to deal with it when I got to college and to pro ball. Um, and I think that's where like my dad came in to, to, to play. Cause he understood like, listen, you, you can be the best in corpus. You get out there, you play for the university of Texas and you play professional baseball. Like there's a, there's a lot of people like you, you know, out there that were the best at their high school were the best, yeah. you know, growing up, like it, what separates you from them. And so, you know, a lot that that separate everybody works hard you know what i mean everybody works hard at what they do and, mm -hmm. and how they go about their business and sometimes you know opportunities go to others and and there's nothing you can do about it like, like i said there's a lot of things in this game that you can't control and all you can my dad always told me he goes all you can control is your attitude and your effort yeah he's like you 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 need to be grateful that you have a jersey and, and that's you know my Every every game I played, you know, from college to to pro ball, like uh, I was grateful to to show up to a locker and have my jerseys, you know, hanging there. Because yeah. you know, right now being a free agent, it's like shoot, I I want nothing more than to go, you know, and, and play baseball. But you know, those opportunities are slim, and, and and part of that is just the things you can't control in baseball. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, being a good teammate and showing up. And being that person, despite of whether you're the guy or not, uh, it, it it shows who you are. It, 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 I remember Augie, Augie Garrido, the guy, I, the coach I played for mm -hmm. at Texas. I mean, legend. He used to always say that this game doesn't uh, build character; it reveals it. So ah, it's like yeah. baseball will bring out who you really are, and and, and sometimes it's not so pretty because this game isn't so fun sometimes. <laughs> and I know a lot of the guys that you know that play this game they understand what that means it's, yeah. it's it's not always a fun sport to be a part of so yeah uh but it's it's why you love it and, 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 and to be able to be good at this game and go through the highs and the lows like you got to be able to take the good with the bad and those lows sometimes are low but it's all part of it <laughs> yeah yeah definitely kind of talk about what it was like playing in the state tournament at moody when you guys lost in the championship yeah so we, you know, we beat Patrick Mahomes in White House in yeah. the semifinal. Mm -hmm. uh, I always remember because it was two outs and our leadoff dropped a two-out bunt. 
down the third base line to score a run. And we beat them, <laughs> I think we beat them like three to two. Uh, so we were coming off a high, and, and our left-handed pitcher, Kenny Sines, who was a, a menace on the mound back in my day, I, I got the pleasure of catching him. He pitched. He was lights out. Um, and then we we faced Tomball, and we sort of just ran into a bus. So I, I think they put up a five spot in the first inning. Mm-hmm. But we held him there, you yeah. know, and it was just it, it was hard to play comeback from there. It yeah. Was, it was um it was a rough game. I mean, no anybody that knows me and that's played with me, it's like I hate to lose. Oh, like yeah. like like there's a there's a lot that probably people don't see of like the the frustrations of not winning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it it wasn't about like my performance. I could care less about my performance. I wanted to win. And that that was sort of my attitude growing up, even playing at football at Moody, which you know, we weren't very good when I was there, but I you know, I was going to go in there and act like I wanted to win every game because yeah. that's just how I was. Yeah. Like, that's just how I was wired, and that's where, you know, I felt separated me. It's like I, 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 I hated to lose more than I, than I loved to win. Yeah. You know, um, but I mean, that 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 championship game and sort of you know, it was tough. The next year coming back because you know, getting there like getting to a state championship game. And, and I heard, you know, Kelsey, the Kelsey brothers said it about Super Bowls, and I'm not comparing it to Super Bowls, mm-hmm. but it's like losing a Super Bowl almost, you know, it's like I'd much rather not get there to feel that pain of losing a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like to get there and, and to lose, a, you know, a state championship and to lose the game. And, yeah. You know, watch it slip through your hands right there. Like it's, it was tough. I mean, I'm a competitor. I, I, I you know, I take winning to heart, and, and you know what I mean. It, baseball is what I've done my entire life, and so I, 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 um, I remember my dad because my dad was handing out the medals. He was the AD at the time. He uh, still yeah. is, and he put the silver on my neck, and I took it off, and I put it in my back pocket. I said, oh, "Why do I want to be? I don't, I don't care about silver." <laughs> I'm like, it, I could care less that I went to the state tournament three years in a row with two different schools. You know, I lost maybe two or three games a year. Like, I had an incredible high school baseball career, but mm-hmm. I was like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, um, and to this day, like, I'll talk about it with Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> yeah. You know, my brother was, was, a, was a pitcher later on at, at Moody and went to the uh, state tournament, and we talk about it. It's yeah. like, never went, not winning a state championship. It, it, I think about it all the time. It, guys like me, you never, you never forget about it. There's, I mean, in this game, competitors like I'm sure you talk to anybody, they they have those moments and they, yeah, they're, they're ingrained in them, and that's just what that fuels their fire and that's their competitiveness. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So then, at that point, that was your junior year at, yeah. there at Moody. Um, when did recruiting really heat up for you? And when did you commit to Texas and how, like, what was it about Texas that sold you? And you were like, I'm going to go play there. Well, well let's talk, talk, talk about that. Well, I always thought like when people were asking me, like, what was it about Texas? And I was like, it's Texas. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I agree for <laughs> and sure. I tell people, and, I, and I have buddies that I played with that, um, that I, I tell them and I give them a hard time. Cause I'm like, listen, I know we're here in AAA. We're at the same level. We all got here. You may have gone to a different school, but I went to Texas, baby. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I take pride in, in that. But uh, my recruitment process started a little bit early. Okay. Uh, it, so I remember, you know, getting offers from in my freshman year, getting offers from Texas and, and other schools. Miami and Alabama, Alabama okay. were sort of my top three. Okay. Um, Going back, like I was like, man, I, I want to be somewhere that my parents, you know, are able to watch me play. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so early on, I got offers, and I just didn't want to, you know, commit. I wanted to, you know, continue to play and, and, and see, you know, I mean, weigh my options. I was a freshman, you yeah. know. My I, I committed my junior year, I think. Yeah, and I signed my senior. Year. So I committed my junior year. Um, Really, I, I visited one other school than te- other than Texas. I visited Miami. Okay. Uh, far. It was just too far. Very far. I mean, being, and then for me, like, going and playing for Augie Garrido mm-hmm. was, like, a big selling point for me. Yeah. Um, and just what he expected of Texas, like, the Texas, you know, the winning tradition, you know, in the 
locker room when we used to break it out. It's like the, the, the winning tradition of the University of Texas would not be entrusted to the timid or the weak. Uh-huh. And so like winning here, and I always remember he told me, he's like, this place is different. He's like, they're going to treat you different. He's like, and they don't care that you're 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. They don't care. They want you to go out there and they want you to win. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I love to win. Augie, like, I come on, I love to win. I want to go out there and I want to win. And I'm going to do everything I can to go out there and win. Yeah. And sort of, and so that was like, I mean, to go play for him, to go, I remember I was watching, I, they had just lost, uh, they were in the final four. They lost to Vanderbilt, Dansby okay. Swanson in the oh, College yeah, World Series yeah. the year before. So it was my senior year. I remember watching them uh, win a super regional. They beat U of H. And I was like, shoot, that's why I'm going to play college baseball, you know? Um, but I just remember being like, I, I want to go be part of that storied program. And, mm-hmm. and if, you're, if a kid from Texas, a kid being from, you know, South Texas, you know, having pride and. And they always, it's, it's a real thing when you get out of Texas, like the yeah. people that aren't from there, they knock on you for, for loving that you're from Texas. Oh, yeah. And I played with a lot of guys like that. And it's it's funny, you know, it's just the part of it. Yeah. Um, but really, they, they sold me and just, they, they said, listen, you're going to show up and we're going to expect a lot out of you. Um, and that's, you know, that's where I wanted to be. And, and it was close enough. And at the time, they had Longhorn Network. They still do. I yeah. think they still it's do. It's the last year of it. This is the last year. Is it really? Yeah. So, like, I was like, man, even if I, if my parents aren't able to come see me, come watch me, like, they'll be able to see me on TV. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, so it's like, it's it's Texas. Like, how can I not want to go to Texas? Yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah. so then, I know you said those uh, schools were in your top three, but by the time your senior year before you signed, or even before you committed to Texas, were you just getting offers from other schools too? Yeah, so surprisingly, like once they knew, like, there was a lot of Texas schools that didn't even bother. Okay. And, and I don't I don't wanna say if they didn't even bother. It was like, Texas was, was sort of was talking to me, and and at that time in, in, in high school, I was the number one catcher in the state. Uh-huh. Um, I got drafted my senior year of high school, but they sort of like sh- shied away once they found out like, oh, he wants to go to Texas. Yeah. You know, like, like we can't get it's like, with yeah, that. it's like, what can you do? Like, like, what can you upsell me on? Like, yeah. it's a team that just went to the College World Series. Like, it's it's a storied program. It's the University of Texas. It's mm-hmm. they, there was really no no other. Um, I had, what's funny is, is I had a call uh, from the University of Colorado and, and I always remember this and he was like, I, I get a call and he's like, hey, this is, and I don't remember his name. It's not, it's not Prime. It's not the guy that was there now, <laughs> but he called me and he said, hey, uh, I just want to know if you're going to go play, play ball anywhere this year. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go play ball. I said, uh, I said, I'm committed to Texas. He was, no, you're not. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go play. He goes, no, they, they've got Swoops and Bouchelle. And I was like, coach, I'm going to play baseball. He goes, you play baseball? <laughs> I was getting recruited to play football my, my senior year where I was like, I was so like sold in on being a baseball player. This coach is like, you play baseball? Like I didn't even, I was just watching your, your huddle film wow was like, so i always i always i tell people that story because i'm like you it just it was funny how it happened because yeah he, and he's like listen if you get drafted he goes you let me know if, if, if it doesn't work out and i was like okay coach like i'll keep that like for me i was just like <laughs> what it was a funny story it really was yeah. but really other than that like no schools came after me they knew i mean i wanted to go play for i wanted to go play for the best and at that time texas was the best yeah yeah so yeah. then in your did you spend four years there I spent three, so okay. I signed after my junior year. Okay, so then in your three years there, from freshman year until junior year, what um, what was that like when you came in? Were you immediately in the lineup? Did you have to wait a little bit? No, uh, I mean, yeah, I did. I didn't. I didn't start opening night as a freshman. And for me, uh, like I went in there, and you know, that's when you might having a dad that that's done it, that's mm-hmm. played the game. You know, he's like, listen. You can't control, you know, who writes the lineup. You can go in there and you can get ready, you can prepare. And so I didn't start my, we were at the, we went to Rice my freshman year and I didn't start the first game. 
we had a doubleheader Saturday. I got to I got to start behind the plate, my the second game. So, Fides Barrera, a South, he's mm-hmm. from South yeah, Texas. Yeah. So he caught the first game, I caught the next one. Okay. Right? So my that was sort of my first start. Um, after I had a good rice weekend, I, I played you know my my that Saturday. I played that Sunday. And then I didn't come out of the lineup after that. I okay. got I got a little hot. I had a really good freshman year, um, but I just remember like not not. I thought I was going to play f- Friday night. I thought yeah. I was going to open up. I thought the start of the season I was going to be on there, and I wasn't. And I was like, okay, well, when I get this opportunity, you know, like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take it and run with it. Yeah. And that's sort of what I did my freshman year. I I, I had a, a good freshman year. Um, I'm not really sure of the accolades and stuff there's some in there uh my dad always told me he's like you don't tell people your accolades you let people tell you <laughs> he's like, well, he, my dad's a very humble man and if you ever talk to him like the, and if you ever play this game it's a very humbling sport so very uh, uh, at the same time you can be you know at the highest of highs and it, and it finds a way to humble you and it yeah. finds a way to, to keep you grounded and uh and keep you centered so uh, my freshman year was a good. I had a really good freshman year. I struggled really my sophomore year. Okay. Um, and that was sort of, I guess you would call it the sophomore slump in the sense that teams started to figure out how to pitch to me. Okay. You know, they they knew my hot zones. Yeah. Coming in as a freshman, it's like you're a free swinger. You know, you're a loose cannon. You're in yeah. there. You're just trying to make a name for yourself. Trying to hit the ball hard. You know what I mean? When scout, when they start scouting you, they start, you know, trying to exploit where you're, you know, not good at, right? You've got to learn how to make those adjustments, and you know, it, every player does it. You know, I struggled my sophomore year doing it, um, and it was trying to, you know, learn, you know, how to deal with that failure and mm-hmm. and deal with that that not, not. I had such a great freshman year, and, and to stink my sophomore year, like we stunk my sophomore year, and. And I, I, I always the type of person I'm, I am, and being a catcher, it's like when I don't play well, I feel like the team doesn't play well. Mm-hmm. Especially when I was in college, yeah. you know, like if if I if I had a good day, like boom, somehow, some way, the team had a good day. Like, yeah, I always, you know, carry that with me of like I, I want to, I want to win. You know, I don't want to be a Texas and, and lose. You know what I mean? So um, my sophomore year was a bit of a struggle. I had a better junior year. I, I uh, my junior year, I suffered an injury right in the middle of the season that, you know, was was a it was a damper uh, because it was my junior year. I was looking to get drafted, you know. I was, but I had a, I had a really good second half uh, my junior year, and it was it all it, it sparked from coming back to corpus yeah it really did and and i look and i rarely look at numbers and i rarely i i don't like seeing them my dad was a big like listen you show up every day and it doesn't matter if you're 0 for 4 4 for 4 you play the game the right way and so like for me like I, I was like i'm never looking at numbers but i always i always my junior year i look at my numbers after I, we make this trip down to corpus my my junior year and i was struggling before I, i'll always remember uh and we were a good team. We were a really good team. We were gonna. We, we were. We knew we had really good potential to to you know, to go to Omaha. We didn't, but we we were a good team. And so we came down there. We came to Corpus. Um, we came to Corpus, and I remember hitting a home run here in Corpus. Mm-hmm. And I got a curtain call, which was probably one of the coolest moments in my college career, well, even baseball career. Like, yeah. did a home run in your hometown at Waterburger Field. Being a you know a kid from Corpus, playing for the University of Texas, coming back to Corpus, and it's like sold out, burnt orange, and you hit a home run, and it's like you black out around the bases. <laughs> yep, you know what I mean. And <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, oh my goodness, like I can't believe that just happened. But it was it was truly a blessing to come back and be able to do that in front of you know Corpus Christi and, and their great baseball fans. But I always remember like after that, it kickstarted the back half of my season, and I played really well the back half. I think I hit another home run that Tuesday. Like nice. it just it sort of rolled. All I needed to do was come home and, and you know be around my people for a little bit. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, baseball in college it was it was great. I had a blast. I always tell people I played in the big leagues of college for 
three years because like playing at Texas was, I mean, just a dream and just yeah. the way they treated us and the things we had access to even now, mm -hmm. like it's so much more now there in Texas and just what they have. So, I mean, I, I, I appreciated and, and I, I was very, you know, thankful and grateful to be able to play. And, and I'll always remember, you know, we had a, a diehard fan, Wilson, Mr. Wilson, and he would come to every game and Texas fans, Texas baseball fans know who I'm talking about. And he, all, he always used to tell me, he goes, I like you came too. He goes, cause you sing the eyes of Texas. <laughs> and so after every game, when we go and we line up, we sing the eyes of Texas to the fans. Uh -huh. And there's, it's, there's people that just stand there and, you know, they just hold their horns up. Me, I always sung it. You know, I was always loud with it. I took pride in going, you know, to the University of Texas. So I, I, I had a blast there. The only, my only regret at, from college is not winning more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. like I... I busted my butt to, to, to be the best I could be. You know, uh, I know that, you know, my time there was, was well spent and, and the trials and tribulations that I went through there prepared me, you know, for pro ball, Yeah. you know, and, and finding that struggle and, and those ups and downs of just baseball in general. Now you go to pro ball and it's like, now you're playing every day. You know, you know, yeah. you're not playing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, like you're playing every day. Yeah. So like it, that sort of helped prepare me in, in, in that aspect. So. Yeah. So then the uh, not I mean, not only that, but like I'm sure that the travel aspect of playing at Texas was like second to none. Right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you're in the, you're in the Big 12. <laughs> yeah, like you probably I played with a guy um, who's still playing. His name is Jackson Wolf. Okay. <laughs> okay. He left handed pitcher and uh, he played at West Virginia. So I, I, he played with the Padres for a little bit. And he used to always tell me. Uh, okay, we, we were talking about like he, he was like we were the best team in the Big 12 when I was there I was like no nah. I said listen you can be West Virginia we're Texas okay he goes he goes we flew everywhere how were y'all how were y'all's buses I was like what do you mean I said we we didn't take any buses I was like we flew charter everywhere like we what do you mean he's like oh like I was like yeah we we were Texas like they treated us like I mean like superstars it was great I had such a great time like i always remember we, we pulled up to the tarmac and we get onto the, the flight and there's chick-fil-a and like cookies yeah yeah and i'm like this is awesome like being from down here like never being on a private plane like yeah. that like i was like man this <laughs> it's texas yeah you know what i mean like it, it's it was uh that travel and like augie i always tell people like he he demanded a lot out of you because of the way we were treated yeah you know like being treated like that, like, like, you know, the New York Yankees of college baseball, like being mm -hmm. treated like that, it, it came with a price. And like, you were expected to win. Like, you're going to get all these things and we're going to stay at the nicest hotels. We're going to fly charter. We're going to, you know, eat the best food. Like, you're going to get taken care of, like, you know, better than anyone out there. Yeah. It's like what we demand in return is, you know, win, you know, and, and to go out there and win. And when you don't win, he... He would let us know. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about Augie. We had lost, I think we lost, this was my sophomore year. We lost to AM Corpus on a Tuesday. <laughs> and he was so mad because he just, he didn't like to lose. It didn't matter. Like he wanted to win, right? And so I always remember he, he calls me into the office and he says, listen, we're going to shake things up a little bit. He says, go back into the to the locker room he goes and tell the guys not to put on their pants and i was like oh okay right so we go out and he comes at so we're in our shorts he comes into the locker room he goes listen guys he's like we're the university of texas he goes the way that you guys are playing and, and the way that you make me feel he goes you're making me feel sick he's like you make me feel like crap and he had a few other choice words in there, and I won't sit there and say it. You can find him on YouTube. He was a fiery guy. Oh, yeah. He did not hold back, and so he ripped into us, and he said, you make me feel the way that I do, we're going to go out here, and we're going to see if you like it. And for two hours, for the entire practice, we had, we had a compliance person there to make sure that practice <laughs> ran for the right amount of time. We ran for two hours. One tenth, boom, we're running. And I'm like, we, we, 
we're exhausted and we're like, man, we got to go play Oklahoma State this weekend. <laughs> like we are struggling. So that's like a Wednesday. Thursday comes around. We show after Wednesday practice, our legs are beat. We're running on the turf, like we're hurting. And we show up and uh, we get on the bus. And usually we get on the bus and we go to the, to the plane. He says, no. He says, you don't, you don't get to lose games and still be treated that way. So he goes, we'll see you guys there. <laughs> he, he takes off, right? So he flies there and we bus. And I was like, I, I, I agree. I agree. You're absolutely right, 16. I used to call him 16. That was his number. Like, you're absolutely right. I was like, like we're not complaining. Like, we get it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I get it. I get it. And it, it was just so funny because he, he he was at the back end. It was, at that point, it was his last year. Um, and he was older. And, and he I was like, I know he ain't going to stay on this 10-hour bus ride. So he, <laughs> he's going to go fly. He's going to get there. He, he, I get it. He he's earned the right to do that. Yeah. He really has. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, the highs and lows of Texas were great, and I got we got treated great there. And I always remember that you, we would usually have a spread. I remember he gave us a crustable, a warm milk, and an apple. He's like, "This is your guys' lunch." Usually we would have you know food everywhere. He's like, no, this is your lunch. You're going on a ten hour bus ride to, to Stillwater. That's so, so funny. Yeah, that, I mean. That travel, I mean, it was Texas. It was everything I could have dreamed of. Yeah. It was. yeah. So, so then, okay. So you said you um, you only spent three years there. So when you made the jump into pro ball, was it uh, you were drafted? So I was actually an undrafted free agent. Okay. I did not get drafted my junior year. Okay. So I, like I said, I had I had an injury that sort of held me out a little bit of the year. Um, and there was questions whether I could catch, if I, if I was good back there, if I was healthy, you know. The back half of my season was great. A lot of things I couldn't control. Um, ended up not getting drafted. And, like, being a kid, like, being, dra I w being drafted out of high school, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I was drafted in the 32nd round in high school to the Chicago Cubs. Mm -hmm. um, being a kid that got drafted out of high school going to Texas, it's like, of course, you know, I, I'm, of course I'll get drafted, right? You know, like if I got drafted out of high school, I, I didn't play that bad at Texas, you know, like I, I, they, there's still sparks and I'm still young and I'm still able to do it. And it's like this game has a way of humbling you. Yeah. And it'll do it in a way that's not so nice sometimes, you know. Um, and I think, you know, not being drafted sort of was like, oh, OK, like it doesn't doesn't end here. Like you're not at the pinnacle of your career yet. Like you, there's still work that needs to be done. Like just, what got you here won't keep you here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you got to continue to get better and you got to continue to, to build that baseball player that, that you want to be and, and, and want to continue to be. So I did not get drafted. I got a call uh, like two in August, right? At the end of their season, I got, I got a call from the, the Padres uh i was i was on vacation i was on a beach in miami i always remember <laughs> and they said hey you know we want to sign you you know we'll give you this much and i was like man i'm gonna go back to school like there's two weeks left in the season what do you what do you mean you're gonna sign me like you're gonna sign me because you need somebody and then you're gonna release me like i don't it's like i'll go i'll go back to school i'll finish and they're like listen do you want to start your pro career now or do you want to go back to school? And at that point, I was like, you're right. I was like, I'm, I'm going to start it now. I can always go back to school. So I remember, <laughs> I remember when I, when I, when I decided to, to boom, pull the, pull the, pull the trigger and, and, and commit to the Padres. I remember I, I showed up to the airport in Miami. My flight was at eight and I got delayed to like two. So I was stuck in an airport, like thinking about, oh, is this really what I want to do? Like, <laughs> it, do I want to sign with the Padres? Like, I can walk right back out now. Like, I don't know, you know. But I mean, I think, you know, I think I made the right decision in, in, in signing and, and starting that pro career. Because mm -hmm. uh, that, that's what was important to me. I, wa I wanted to, to get to a place where I could eventually play every day or like, you know, get more at bats, just get my clock started. At, at that point I was, you know, 21, 22. Uh, and the older you get in this game, like the less, the more, the less valuable you get. So like, there's always somebody younger, yeah. like coming in behind you. So it's like, I get that. I understood that. 
And so I signed. I signed as an undrafted free agent. And uh, shoot, I I remember playing uh, rookie ball in Arizona. And it was like 120 degrees. And I was like, shoot. I loved it. I loved it. I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I get to wake up every day. I don't have to go to school. I get to wake up, show up to the field at like 12 or 1 and play a game. I was like, count me in. Like, I'll do this for as long as you want. Like, that's just, I mean, pro baseball, you have to love it. Like, you have to love it because it's not always fun. And mm -hmm. like, even this game, like, you've got to love it to be able to play it for as long as, you know, I have, for as others have had, have because, I mean, it's it's a grind. Yeah. It really is. And, and people, they only see the, the, the glorious parts of it, but like mm -hmm. those long bus rides, those, you know, those those flights, even you know, travel days and AAA, like it's it's tough. It's not it's not for everybody. Yeah, and it, it's um, it's a privilege to be able to put on a jersey, and, and that's the way I took it. So, uh, I, w I was very grateful to be able to even have, to have the opportunity to to sign as an undrafted free agent. But it also it put a little chip on my shoulder, mm -hmm. you know, just because like. Okay, like you don't think I'm good, and so like I remember going in there, and every pe I I would outlast guys that they would draft after me, mm -hmm. like the next year. Right? Yeah, yeah. In a couple years, I'd be like, I'm still here, and the guy they drafted a couple years ago isn't. You know what I mean? I took pride in that. I wanted to stick around. I wanted to, you know, show up every day and and, and go to work and know that you know I could catch. And so yeah. that was sort of my you know entire career in pro ball was sort of a journeyman. You know, I, I wasn't a, I wasn't a big bonus baby. I didn't have a big. I was a college catcher that they knew could catch. So like, mm -hmm. my first full year of pro ball, I was, I was in high A for a little bit. You know, I I ended in low A, which where I played decently well. Um, and then my second full year, yeah, my second full year, I was in Triple A, which was twenty nineteen. Yeah. I was in AAA, so they knew I could do it. Um, they knew I could catch. They knew uh, I could that I love this game. You know, what I mean? yeah. they, they knew I could do it. So I sort of played. I eventually made my way through all the levels. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, and people will understand what I say with, like, when I'm a journey. When I say I'm a journeyman, like I was, I I, I went to Double A for you know ten days, and then was right back up to Triple A. Like. I was just sort of their guy that they knew could catch, they knew could do the job, and wherever they saw, you know, fit, you know, that's where they put me. Mm -hmm. And sort of, for me, like, I was like, listen, I'm going to go to work. Wherever you tell me to go to work, I'm going to go to work. So it doesn't matter to me. If I've got a jersey, if you're paying me to play, you put me anywhere you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah. So then... Uh, what what I guess what city in that minor league grind that in all your stops which has been your favorite? I mean, El Paso, Texas is really a a second home to me. Mm -hmm. um, being there, being able to spend the latter part of my you know six year career, you know I played out my six year contract with the Padres. Uh, to be there, to play there for four out of my six years there, um, just the relationships that you build with the the staff and the front office. And the fans, you know, the they're right on you. They they know who you are, you know. Especially, you know, being there for so long, it's like it, it starts to feel like home, you know. And, yeah. And, and people are always like, well, how did you like El Paso? And I was like, listen, I, I went to when I went to work every day, people were in the seats. Like they loved coming to El Paso Chihuahuas games, and so yeah. I I was very fortunate to spend you know a lot of my career in El Paso because it was like. There's not really a better place to really play, I, and I truly believe that. I mean, we've, there's some cool, cool, uh, cool places, cool cities in in the PCL. You know, mm -hmm. you got Vegas, you mm -hmm. got uh, you got Salt Lake City, Reno. You got some cool, you know, Round Rock. You got Round Rock. You mm -hmm. know, you've got cool cities. You know, but El Paso was a very sleeper city, and and. And you can ask a lot of the people that have played in the PCL, like whenever they come to El Paso, they love it. The hotel is right there. It's a nice hotel. You know, the downtown part of El Paso, like it is just a, it's a, it's a treat. It really is just to be able to say that I've played there and, and, and to have, you know, made an impact there to be involved in that community. Mm -hmm. uh, it was truly a blessing. I, 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 I cherished every day of it and I, and I miss it every day. I really do. They opened up, uh, this past 
this past week in El Paso and all the buddies that I still have playing there they're like man it's not the same without you and i'm like man it, it feels different being down here because yeah. like all my the past four years all i've known is el paso yeah so, um but yeah el, el paso texas you know it's the furthest away from corpus i feel like it's such a far drive <laughs> like, and yeah. it's like man but it's texas so yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so then you you touched on it earlier you said you're a free agent right now yeah. kind of explain you said you played out your six-year contract yeah. with the padres so when you signed the contract was six years and then is it after seven years of minor league ball you can choose free agency or how, how does yeah, that work so, so basically it's just like and there's different rules now with the new like cba and after this past strike and the minor league life has gotten a lot better in, yeah. in the way that we have been treated. I mm -hmm. remember my first full year in minor league baseball, I made seven thousand dollars. Yeah, like seven for six months, I made seven thousand, and I had to pay for rent. I had to pay for yeah, like it was a grind. And so that's what I when I what I mean when I tell people like you've got to love it because <laughs> it is a grind sometimes. So. Um, basically, you know, you play out your six years and you you become a free agent and so right now it's sort of just like staying ready you know you never know what can happen in, in this game and it's you know there's a lot of guys out there like me that that don't have jobs mm -hmm. that want to continue to play baseball and i know plenty of guys who who still have the drive to do it who are still preparing to do it and it's just a matter of opportunity and and that's um that's a big thing in this game is like the opportunities you get, you know, and, and how not to take them for granted, you know, because yeah. cause I, I never want to say that I, you know, looking back, I, I, I didn't, you know, that I didn't love it because I, I know I did, you know, I knew, I knew how fortunate I was and how blessed I was to be able to play this game for as however long I, I, mm -hmm. I you know, I, I used to always tell people, man, I want to play till I'm, you know, 35, you know, as long as I can, you know, yeah. and that's a right mindset to have and, and to be able to want to play this game for as long as you can. And sometimes like you're not able to, you know, and, and that, that reveals what kind of character you have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. that, that shows the type of person you are. Like, who are you when, you know, you've worked for, for this lifelong dream and you've, you've, it's all you've known your entire life and it's taken away from you. Mm hmm. Like, who are you then? You know, what kind of person are you? Um, and so, I mean, baseball is, Augie used to always tell me, he's like, it's life. He's like, it's life. Like, that that's what baseball is. And mm -hmm. slowly but surely, I'm 28 years old, and, and you're starting to see that, you know. You, you start to see how, you know, there's things in life you can't control, and you just got to keep chugging and, and keep going. And so, like, right now, being a free agent, it's like, I remember, you know, when I first entered free agency, I wanted, I, I still want to play to this day, you know, I still mm -hmm. want to play. I remember sending out an email to every team in the MLB um, and just saying like, listen, like you call, I'll be ready. Like, yeah. like I, I want to express my want and my, you know, attitude to, to play this game and, and to do it at a high level. You know, I've been to two big league camps. I played at, at, at a very high level. Um, I was on the taxi squad for three days in Mexico City. With yeah, the I was, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Um, but like, I, 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 I expressed the urgency of wanting to play, and so like, that want and will is is still there. And, and there's a lot, you know, that goes on behind the scenes that I know that probably will never see the light of day. And that's that's part of this game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like preparing for an opportunity, even if you don't get it. Yeah. Like that, that, that's just how, it, how this game goes. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it's the beauty of it. And it's, it, it breaks your heart a little bit. I always remember I had a, my, um, my, one of my roommates in 2022, CJ Nahosa, he was a shortstop at yeah. Texas. He told me, I remember one, he was my roommate and he said, you know, nobody tells you when you fall in love with this game, how much you're going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I get that because sometimes I hate it, man. I, I hate what it does to you. I hate how it breaks your heart sometimes. Yeah. But it's a, it's a true blessing to be able to have played for as long as I have. It really has. So I'm grateful for every moment, every, you know, every opportunity, every, you know, every teammate I got to play with. It, it's, it was a treat. It really was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, okay, so ideally yeah. you get to keep playing. Yeah. Post-baseball. 
what is the uh, the the career goal? So yeah. maybe that's you want to get into coaching, you yeah. want to have your own team, your own organization that yeah. you do with travel guys in high school. What what would you want to do post the career? Well, you know, I always and I used to always tell my brother, I used to always tell you know my my, my dad, or just the plan was always to come back and, and have some sort of you know a facility for. Mm -hmm kids from South Texas, like mm -hmm. from Cor for Corpus kids, you know, yeah. being here in the off seasons, I always remember it was very hard for me to sort of, I was very, I was very fortunate because I had guys who played pro baseball that were on the same time schedule mm -hmm. as me. Right. So they were, they were pitchers. So they were tossed to me. They would feed yeah. me. They, they would help me do what I needed to do in the off season, but it was very like sporadic. It wasn't yeah. like, it wasn't uh it wasn't a place where I was like, okay, I know I can be here because I can work out, I can hit. So I've spent the last couple of seasons, the last, the, the past couple of off seasons in Austin, mm -hmm. right? Because they had the facilities yeah. and, and there's places there to where, you know, I get where I need to get. So for me, like post baseball, it was always about, you know, how can I, you know, give back to Corpus Christi in the sense that, I, I take pride in being from the city and I take pride in, in being a baseball player from Corpus and and they've helped shape and the city has helped mold and shape me into that player. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, it's about coming back and and, and sort of spreading that knowledge of, of yeah. me playing for Augie Garrido and the University of Texas and playing for the six year the, the six years of pro baseball that, you know, I I was so fortunate to play for like the end game was always to sort of come back and, and, and have a facility that's sort of in the works right now that, you know, now that I've had this, you know, downtime and mm -hmm. this reflection of like still staying ready, but, you know, trying to look at, you know, opportunities outside. Yeah. Of, you know, and the thing is, I say outside of baseball, somehow, some way it'll be with baseball. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Somehow, I, I, you know, I've dedicated a lot of my life to this game and, and I'm very fortunate for that. And it's given me a lot of the, the blessings and, and fruits that, that, that I've, you know, been so fortunate to acquire. But it's uh, it's I, I want I want I want to find a way to come back and just and and spread that knowledge to these ball players down here. Yeah. Because I always remember uh, Augie Garrido, he used to, he, he told me, he said, uh, I remember sitting down with him and when I first met him at Texas and he said, the people who stay and the people who are successful, and if you look at all of them, are, are, are the people that believe they belong, mm -hmm. right? And so like, I think, you know, bringing that mentality of knowing that you belong in a place no matter where you come from, right it, it holds a big weight and so like for me I, I, i'd like to you know eventually you know open up my own facility for guy like pro guys mm -hmm. and college guys to come back in their off season to not have to worry about like a place that they you know a place to work out they have you know cages and a weight room and they have yeah. all the stuff that's accessible that they need right that it's for it's for corpus you know by corpus yeah, you know what yeah I mean? exactly. it's like, like exactly. and, and that and that's all it was for me and that's where i'm sort of trying to go in, in my life and it may not be something that i spend my entire life on but it's something that you know i want to build and, and it's something that uh is important to me i had a my my summer baseball coach from a long time william Rowland, mm -hmm. passed away unexpectedly this past january yeah um and that was a big hit because, you know, I played summer baseball for William Rowland. He's a South Texas legend and people know who I'm talking about. And, and he's a big reason why I got to the University of Texas mm -hmm. and why some of the connections that I had came from, you know, William Rowland. And, yeah. And so, you know, after his passing, you know, me moving back here to Corpus and it was sort of all just like the timing and, and the you know, God's plan and how, you know, you may not think he's working, but he's working. Yeah, yeah. So, so like me being able to come back and he, you know, he has a son who's 14 Prince, uh, who I'm helping coach his, his team. And it was sort of like, it sort of sparked a, a little passion and a, and a yeah. little fire inside of like, you know, wanting to give back you know, wanting to, to sort of just, listen, guys, I've done it. Like, yeah. I know where you want to get to like, yeah. Hey, I, I, however i can be of service to you like 
let me know. And so like that sort of this time away from baseball, it hasn't been away. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's been, I've been very involved with the game and, and trying to spread it throughout South Texas and, and, and really trying to build it so that, you know, you see so many guys that have been, I mean, Blake Mitchell, you know, mm -hmm. first round, you see guys, you know, you see Dalen Pena at Texas State, you know, absolutely, you know, just playing his butt. You see guys from Corpus like everywhere. Like in pro ball, you know, you got Michael Berglund, you got Aaron Hernandez, you got Kelly M. Schaff, you know, you got guys that are from Corpus. Yeah. And like, I know, for me, like, I've been, I've traveled, I've been all over the country, I haven't been too far. I was like, but I love Corpus. And, and, it, and had I had a facility to come back to and really hone in and really just be like, listen, this is, it, it's because for me, like, my off seasons were like, I need to work out. I need to hit, and that's all I need to do. Yeah. Like I need to get ready for the season. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. And so, like to have a facility like that for these for these guys who are going to continue to go to college, right? Mm -hmm. Continue to go play pro ball. Like for them to come back, and for them to be around younger baseball players. Like now you have that younger baseball player that's in that facility with those big leaguers and mm -hmm. those pro baseball players and those collegiate baseball players, and they start to be like, shoot, I belong with these guys. Yeah, exactly. You know, like like being around them, like. They came from where I came from. I went to Moody High School. You know what I mean? Like I, yep. I I'm right down the street, Trojan Drive. Yep. You know, so it's like it can happen. And like like believing that you belong and having those guys sort of be able to come back and, and, and do something like that. It's always something that I've wanted to, you know, really embark on. And it it's just sort of in the beginning process of it. And there's a I know there's a lot of I mean, Jose Trevino is a guy who's done it, you know, for a long time mm -hmm. in the big leagues that's from Corpus. Um, but like just to have guys' minds like that to come be able to come back and sort of have a facility that even just in high school that kids can go to. And yeah. so for me, like it was all, almost like wanting to build off William Rowland and what he did for me and for you know my family and for the the, the kids in South Texas that he has helped. It's like I sort of want to sort of just build off that and continue to to put Corpus on the map and continue yep. to, to to put Corpus out there because Corpus, I think, I mean, it you look at the baseball down here and it's second to none. And I truly believe that. And yeah. I'm biased because I'm from here, but it's, it's, it's no joke down here. And so that's sort of, eventually I know probably I want to coach, you know, and I'm looking into those aspects now. I, I, I love this game. And so I, I love, you know, what it teaches you, what it mm -hmm. brings out in you, you yeah. know, who you are as a man, because, you know, it's easy to be that guy at the front of the line when you're four for four and oh, yeah. you're playing well and, you know who are you when you haven't had a hit in a week yeah you know like who who are you Tell, like i want to know who 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 who's that man that, that's like shoot because I, I know i've been that guy's i'll call mom mom I, i'm ready to come home <laughs> <laughs> like i'm ready to come home like this is this ain't for me you know it, it's tough it's it's a tough it's a tough game and you gotta love it and i and that's all it is i love this game i love what it's given to me and it's hard to associate this game without corpus christi yeah it really for is sure. it really is so i think the only thing i have left is uh that little mexico city taxi squad experience yeah i mean yeah kind of talk about that how did that play out that was that was really cool i i, I remember you know my triple a manager at the time was like hey listen like you're gonna go to mexico city and i was like what <laughs> like me and guys will know what i'm talking about like there's days you feel very far from the big leagues and there's days you feel very close mm -hmm. you know and that's that's the closest i've really have gotten to like oh <laughs> like okay he's like listen you're gonna go be on the taxi squad and they get an extra guy they're in mexico city it's a quick turnaround it's a night game and day game he's like uh they wanted you and i was like I ain't going to ask questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Whatever you need, you know. And so I remember getting, you know, that that opportunity to go, you know, didn't play, but I was there for three days, mm -hmm. you know. I was in the – I always tell people I was in the big leagues for three days, but don't have anything to show for it. I really wasn't. Yeah, I really were... wasn't in the big league. I was, on, I was on the taxi squad, but it was like – like I said, some days you feel really close to it. Yeah. <laughs> some days you don't. And the thing is, like, I played with a guy, you know, I've, I I never had the privilege of, of getting to the big leagues in that sense of, of being the few number of players that got to play there. But, like, mm -hmm. 
there's guys that are a lot older than me that deserve that I don't want to say deserve, but yeah, they they've played well enough to be big leaguers and aren't, you know. Yeah. And it's like I'm not the only one out there that that's gone through that. That's yeah. gone through that struggle. But uh being there in Mexico City was cool. I mean, it's just an entirely new country, like just the 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 big league flight back from you know Mexico City to to San Diego. Even like the we had an hour and a half trip uh <laughs> to the airport after the game. I was like, we're getting escorted. I, there was a, it was haze. I wasn't hazed. I wasn't hazed by any of the guys, but one of my really good friends, Brett Sullivan, mm-hmm. he was, he was, uh, he was in charge of making sure, you know, everything got off the bus and he left me in charge of that. He's like, Hey, bull. They called me bull. He's like, make sure you get everything off the bus. If there's any bags left around, like make sure you got it. And so, uh, me, we, we show up and I'm like a deer in headlights. Like I, for me, like it, it's been three days. I'm still on a high, like uh, I'm still in the big league. You know, I'm just here. I'm not on the roster. I'm here. I'm like, so like I get off the plane. I'm like, and we get on the plane and he sits next to me. He goes, hey, did you get any? Did you look for anything? And I was like, no. He's like, that's all right. I got you. Don't worry about it. Right? <laughs> so, and I was like. Sully, we got called him Sully. I was like, Sully, you gave me a heart attack. Like it was, he, he, and he knew what he was doing. He was like, no, I got you. He goes, I'm just playing with you. But I mean, it was, it, it was a, for guys like me who, uh, who just get a small taste of it, it yeah. was, I mean, you hold on to those memories and those moments and, you know, that time forever. I mean, it mm-hmm. really is, you know, to get that close, you know, not, to not to be able to, to crack the seal or to get in there, you know, it's, it's, it's hard and it's, it's all it's all part of the you know the the this game breaking your heart you know yeah it's all part of it yeah and uh, I'm very grateful for it I'm, I, I I tell people that all the time I'm very grateful for being able to play this game being able to do that um, and so hopefully you know I get to play it longer or hopefully I get to stay involved in it longer because mm-hmm. like I said it, it, you never know when this game you know coaching wise or playing wise when it can be taken away from you. You really can't. You really don't know. So, um, but yeah, I mean, Mexico City was cool. I, I brought back some cool stuff. Yeah, I kept were, everything. Were you in El Paso when you found out, and then you kind of flew to San Diego, and then you all went to Mexico yeah. City? Okay. So, so yeah, yeah. So yeah, when I, I found out, we were in El Paso, and from El Paso, yeah. Okay. Out. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I remember. Cool. I remember you posted it on your Instagram story, I, I, and I responded. I was like, oh, and I like, <laughs> I, I as soon as I saw it, I looked at Twitter. And I searched up Michael Cantu Padres to see like yeah. if he got no, called up no, or what yeah, happened. No, no, no trans, trans, Yeah, nothing. Yeah, so no then I texted I texted Chris Thomason and I was yeah. like, I sent him a screenshot. I was like, Michael Cantu just posted this on his story. The yeah. Padres are playing in Mexico City, and he's like, oh, he was probably on their taxi squad. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that that probably makes sense. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's that's super exactly. cool. Yeah, no, it, it was super cool. It, it was. I mean, I went to big league camp last year, and I, and I got invited. So like for me, I was like, man, it could happen. Or like mm-hmm. for me, the the position I play, like catcher, you never know what can happen you take yeah. a foul ball off the you know yeah and it's it's very fast yeah and so uh i, I was prepared to play and, and it just so happened that you know we did it but it's all yeah. part of it yeah um man i think that covers yeah. pretty much everything is there anything that you want to add anything no. you want to talk about well we i mean i'd love to get on again i, I can talk we if you want to hear stories and shoot i can talk and we'll, we'll hang out we can do it at my or whatever you yeah, yeah yeah we can do it i mean make sure your buddies here yeah we we'll do it all we'll, I'll, I'll say it all over again I don't, yeah i'm sure there's stuff i'm missing out there's funny stories i'm missing out i mean i played baseball i've played baseball for a long time i've ran into a lot of good personalities good coaches good players um great stories i, I uh it's a it's a crazy game i'm very fortunate to, to yeah. have done it yeah, I can imagine. Um, the, the last few interviews that we posted, actually, when we uh, did the video with Aaron back in like November, um, one of your former coaches, uh, Richard Diaz, uh-huh. he reached out and he said, he was basically saying, you need to interview Michael Cantu. <laughs> And I told him, I was like, hey, we're going to, you know, if, if, yeah, we're going to try if, if he's in town and if he comes on, like we're absolutely going to try to have him on. For sure. So, uh, Richard, I did not forget. <laughs> and here you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, but yeah, no, that super cool interaction. Just like the community, yeah. you know, recognizing, remembering, yeah. being involved. Corpus. We're from Corpus and, and the greater Corpus area. Like it's, uh, I mean, I, I've, 
I've spent my time in, you know, Skidmore. I have family in, in, in Beeville. I've been to, you know, a lot of the, the small towns outside of you know, Corpus. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, I, I, I love where I'm from. I take pride in it. And, and, and for me, it's like never forgetting, you know, where you come from, your roots. Yeah. And, and who you are and, and who built you. And, and, and so for me, it's about coming back and, and trying to give back and, be of service of any way you yeah know, my my mom always tells me and she's a a woman of great faith and and i don't talk about my faith enough as much as i should because bottom line i wouldn't be where i'm at today without you know our lord and savior jesus christ in that sense just of of we forget and my mom always tells me she's like we forget that uh jesus didn't come to be served he came to serve mm -hmm. you know and it's very easy to forget that nowadays. It's yeah. like, you know, we, we think so much and like, oh, we don't need to bother with things that don't serve us. Like if it doesn't serve us, like, ah, yeah. uh, it's so big. It's like, no, it's, it's the exact opposite. Like how can yeah. I be of service to the people of this world, to the people who've helped me, you know, get to where I am? Mm -hmm. Like how can I be of service to, you know, William Rowland and his memory? Yeah. Uh, and to this great city that's that's helped me, you know, get to where I am, and, and yeah, and, and be fortunate to be able to do it. So I, uh, I'm very grateful for that. So yeah, in your time since you moved back, have you been to any high school games just to go watch? Oh, I do. I, yeah, I go. To, I, I was at Moody's game yesterday. We oh beat yeah, Carol. yeah. We won. We beat Carroll. Um, I'm at I'm at all of these high school games. I love okay. it. I, I I, for me, like. I want South Texas and Corpus Christi to just, I want them to, to be good. Yeah. You know? and, and for me, I want Moody to be a little bit better than everybody else. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's just part of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, there's so much talent here in Corpus. Like it, it, it doesn't matter. It really does. Our, the fourth place team in our, the district, CCISD, will, is just as good as any first place team anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So it's like, people get so caught up in what high school they're going to it's like no go go to the high school and take them to the state tournament you know mm -hmm. what i mean that's how it was when i was back in the yeah day. like like for me i left carroll right where i just had won two oh i i didn't win i just gone to the state tournament twice i went to moody and i was like we're going to the state tournament like yeah. it doesn't matter like we're going i don't like one way or the other, we're going to go to state. Yeah. And so, like, that's the mentality that being from Corpus, like, you have to have. Like, it doesn't matter what high school you go to, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter if you go to Moody High School, Carroll High School, Vets, King, Miller, you know, it, it, Ray. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where you go. Like, it's out there. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the talent's out there. You got a big leaguer from Ray High School and Nick yeah. Lofton. Like, it, 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 yeah. it's out there. I mean, like, guys, that, like, it's being done currently right yeah. now and so like you, you can't sit here and tell me that you need to go to a specific school yeah. to be able to do it you know what yeah. i mean so it's like south texas baseball it, it, it doesn't matter where you go like it'll find you yeah so whenever guys go to the college level or to the uh to the pro level do you reach out to them tell them hey man like you know congrats you, if you ever need anything Th there's a couple i mean i, I sort of you know i keep to myself it, it's it's hard it's hard to and I, I've done a bad job of like even just reaching out or keeping mm -hmm. in touch because it's like you get going and life happens. Oh, yeah. But it's always like whenever you do get to see them and whenever you do get to, you know, catch up with guys and talk to them, you always wish them well and you always let them know, listen, you need anything, you let me know. It's sort of that fraternity of being, you know, a collegiate baseball player and then even now being a professional baseball player, that fraternity of like being from Corpus and doing it, like, mm -hmm. it means a little more. Like, yeah. The way I talk to, to people from Corpus is a little different the way that I talk to yeah because they get it people from quite and it's hard for like people to understand like oh it's from corporate like it's a corpus thing you wouldn't understand yeah. you know what i mean yeah, it really yeah. is it really is and, and i love that about it so it's uh i uh i i i've i see guys i've played against guys uh you know that i played against aaron last year so like i always see him throughout the year you know i'll comment on a couple of instagrams i'm not really on instagram a lot so mm -hmm. it's like um I'm, I'm trying to get back into it. I just the way the world's going. I'm just like, <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, it's uh, there's a lot of talent down here, and and that's why I'm excited to sort of you know 
sort of try and build a facility just that, so that everybody, yeah. you know, is able to go and do things. And then it, uh, for me, it's like it'll get to a point where it's probably going to be mul- like there's going to be multiple people that are doing the same thing because there's going to be so many yeah. pro ball players. Exactly. There's going to be so many college ball players, like just part of it, which yeah. is which is great about it. Yeah, that's super exciting. Yeah. Um, well, dude, thanks for yeah. thanks for coming I know we went by. over my bad. No, no, you're we, fine. There's we, no limit at all. There's no, no limit no, at no. all. So I think yeah. with I think with one guy, I think it might have been Wyatt Matheson. I think we went like an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah. Like so, there's no limit. Don't yeah, feel bad. No, for sure, for yeah, sure. but um, anything else you want to say no, at all? No, no, I'm I'm sure I'll think of stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, sweet man. Um, thanks again for coming by. For sure. um, I'm glad to have you back. Hopefully, you get that opportunity to, yeah. to keep playing. If not, we'd love to have you around. Yeah. Whether that's sooner or later. Yeah. We'll um, talk. We'll talk. Like I said, we'll talk, and we can talk about stories and fun time. I, I enjoy talking about it, and that's the way I keep my memories alive. And and loving the fact that I played it, I'm very grateful for yeah. playing this game. I really am. Yeah. Well, sweet. Uh, to everyone watching and listening, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, we are right smack in the middle of high school district play. So a lot of those uh, playoff races are heating up. Uh, we've got uh, 29-5A with all the CCISD schools. That is just a big hodgepodge of who's going to win tonight. So we'll see how it shakes out. Uh, hopefully we have Javier with us on the next episode. He had to work today and he can can make this one. But We'll have him back soon, and we'll talk some more baseball for sure. We'll give you guys a little playoff preview once we get uh, some standings in. Hopefully, we get another episode before that. But, yeah, until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in, tuning in and, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch you next time.